On tonight's video, I want to talk about who you were before you met the narcissist. I want to ask each and every one of you who are watching, close your eyes and think, who were you before you met the narcissist? Very often, I hear a lot of survivors say that they don't even remember who they were. Simply because when you're in a relationship with a narcissist, you're living for them. You completely forget about yourself and your needs. So today I wanted to talk about that, remembering who you were before you met the narcissist, because that's important. Many people think that you'll never get yourself back to the place that you once were. And I believe that that's partially true. That's partially true. There are parts of you that you'll never get back. For example, the part of me that believed that most people were good and kind and I believed in the goodness of people, that's gone. I don't think I'll ever get that back because before I think about people being good people, like if I have an interaction with a person, I'm not going to automatically think that that person is going to have tendencies of being a good person. I'm not going to label people any longer. I've gotten so far into my healing where I'm not going to label people. But now the person that I am today, you have to prove yourself to me before I think that, you know, most people are good. I used to think that. I used to be the type of person that I used to think most people are good, most people are kind. But after being with an arc, that part of me is gone. And I don't think that part of me will ever come back because I suffered way too much at the hands of a person I don't think I'll ever believe. I don't want to say this, but I don't think I'll ever have that strong belief that most people are good and kind. I no longer think that. I think now you have to prove yourself to me. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. So who were you before you met the narcissist? I want you to please comment because I want to know if you remember who you were. A lot of people don't. Narcs, talk about you so badly. They critique you so badly. They're so harsh with their criticism that they really hurt your confidence. So you can go into this relationship feeling, maybe not at your best, but feeling pretty good about yourself. And they criticize you daily, weekly, to where even if you had great confidence, you're going to start doubting yourself. So do you remember how confident you were? Because you need to get him back. You need to get her back. That's part of your healing. Your energy level before the narcissist. I know I used to have a lot of energy before I met the narc. And when you get with these people, a lot of them don't even let you sleep. So they torture you during the day with whatever tactics they use. They devalue you when they criticize you, when they gaslight you. So you're walking around confused, feeling down about yourself because you're constantly being criticized, feeling like you're not enough, feeling like you're not worthy. And then when you try to go get some sleep, they don't even let you sleep. So your mind is not even working properly. They beat you down. Your energy level goes all the way down. You have to get that part of you back. You have to dedicate time to sleeping more. That's part of the healing. A lot of people would think, really? But why sleeping? You need sleep. You need sleep, as much sleep. I know right after the discard, I mean, I always struggled with my sleep. I always struggled with my sleep. But once I got with that man, he 
I barely slept. So my sleep pattern got so messed up. And once I finally decided to end that relationship, I started to sleep a little bit better. I started to sleep a little bit better. My sleep is not 100%, but I do take pills now. Um, but anyhow, that's one thing that you have to try to get back. Your energy level. So give your body the rest that it needs. Because when you were with the narcissist, I'm pretty sure your energy level went down. And right after the discard, due to the, all the stress, I'm pretty sure you, you were lacking sleep as well. So you need to recover that. So I mentioned confidence. I'm going to go in a little deep, deeper with the confidence towards the end of the video because that needs a little bit more time. Your physical appearance. Your physical appearance. Again, when you were with the narcissist, you were probably too tired, too emotionally drained to have the energy. Not all of you, not all of you, because I know some people, you know, they keep up with themselves no matter what. Even if they're feeling like hell, they still have the desire to, you know, put makeup on, get their hair, because everything. But a lot of people, I'll even go as far as saying most people, when they're under so much stress, you don't take care of yourself physically the way that you once did because you're too stressed out. You're too stressed out to put yourself together well, to take care of your body, to eat the right foods. A lot of people, and I'm one of them, I was eating well, well, not totally but I was trying to eat well during the relationship. I like taking care of my body. But towards the end of the relationship, since the discard, till now, I have put up, put on at least 25 pounds. And I know that I said I was going to lose it. And let me tell you, I've tried. But once again, the level of stress that you go through during and after this type of relationship, they make you eat your feelings away and you shouldn't. But if that's the case, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, you need to work out. You need to, I'm going to tell you, you need to be patient with yourself. You need to be patient with yourself. You don't want to add on to the stress that you already have by making yourself feel bad because you're eating your feelings away. I do recommend that you see a therapist if you're able to, because that might help having somebody to talk to and express your feelings. Because a lot of times when we're walking around with so much hurt, so much pain, and we're not able to express it to somebody, then we just eat and eat and eat and eat. And of course, that's not good for you. So I'm not going to tell you, continue to eat like crazy. You're going to be okay. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to tell you, try your best. Try to eat as healthy as you can. I always share my fitness app. I'm back on it again. It's an app on your phone. You can download it. I mean, in the past, it has really helped me. And, and I'm going to try to continue to lose these 25 pounds. Um, but I'm not going to beat myself up about it and you shouldn't either because you have gone through a lot of stress anxiety trauma it's, it's a lot it's a lot on your mind and it's a lot on your body okay so take it easy on yourself we want to get back to who we were but sometimes we're not able to okay so, and maybe your body for the time being and maybe for several more months, it's going to take some time to get that back, okay? Your outlook on life. What was your outlook on life before you met the narcissist? I guarantee you it was way better. Guaranteed. That's something that if you are still struggling to feel hopeful about the future, that's something you need to get back. 
if you had a positive outlook on life and people and your future in general, and you don't have that right now, that's something that you need to work on, okay? Because narcs have the ability to rob you of that positivity. If you were a positive person when you got with them, they killed that in you. And I know that everybody wants to be positive. Who doesn't want to be positive? And we get on social media and a lot of people are like, oh, if you're not positive, you got out of my life. I don't want to deal with negative people. But after being with a narcissist, it's very hard to stay positive and to be happy. That's why sometimes, I mean, and I'm bipolar, so I want to put that out there. I am bipolar, so my moods are pretty up and down. You're not going to see me excited and happy all the time on these videos. Like today, you know, you can noticeably see that, you know, my mood is different and that's okay. That's why, you know, I still decided to film on the days that I don't feel so good. Why? Because I want to give you me. I want to give you the reality. And the reality is that after you've endured these types of relationships, you're not going to feel joyful and happy and, you know, just put together all the time. You're not. You know, as I said, I'm bipolar, so my moods are up and down regardless. But being with a narcissist will mess with that as well. So for all of you who are bipolar or have depression, you know, bipolar depression or just depression period, anxiety, any other mood disorders or mental illnesses, you really have to care for yourself because being with the narcissist worsens your condition. Because you know, for those of you who are bipolar, I'm going to speak to the people who are bipolar because I know about this. Bipolar people, in order for you to reduce your stress levels, it's recommended for you to have some type of schedule during your day that helps with the stress, that helps with your moods. And being with an ARC, that's pretty much impossible because they hit you up with all different things that come up that you have to do, that you must do. If they're not in the mood for this, then this is going to happen. So they throw your schedule off. They throw you off completely. If you are not taking meds or if you are taking meds and you're with a narcissist, you might be so caught up in the drama of the relationship that you may forget to take your medication or just stop taking it because you are just so concerned with catering to the narc and making the narc happy. Because as you guys know, when you're with a narcissist, everything revolves around them. So you forget about taking care of yourself and your mental health. So that's something that you really, really need to remember. If you're still in a relationship with a narcissist and you suffer from mental illness or mood disorder, don't forget to take your medication. Don't forget about going to therapy. You need that, okay? Back to building up your confidence. Once again, remember who you were before the narcissist. How was your confidence level? I know for me, my confidence level has always been high. My confidence level has always been high. And when I got with the narcissist, little by little, little, little by little, he messed with my confidence. Not, he didn't destroy my confidence. I'm not going to lie and say that. But he did make me feel bad here and there. He made me question myself often. He did throw digs. He did say things that made me question myself, made me doubt myself every now and then. And they make you question yourself. They make you ask yourself, am I enough? Am I doing enough? Am I good enough? They do make you ask yourself those questions. 
And if you still feel like you're not good enough, and if you still doubt if you're worthy or not, those are things that you need to work on. Because from what I've experienced, the way to get out of this mess is by building yourself up daily, you guys. You got to build yourself up daily. Build your self-esteem. That is major because that's the one thing. That's the first thing they go after. Why? Because if you don't feel good about yourself, you're more likely to take the abuse. If you question whether you're worthy or not, you're more likely to stay there and take it because you don't feel worthy, because you don't feel like you are enough. So that is the major thing that you need to work on as you heal, is building your self-confidence up. I know I say that a lot, but that's key. You have to feel good about yourself. You have to get sleep. You have to feel good about your body. Like I said, don't stress out about your body too much because you have gone through a lot of trauma and sometimes we eat our feelings away. We eat our emotions away. Food is comfort, okay? Just keep an eye on all of the things that I mentioned and think about who was I before I met this narcissist? And get yourself back on track. Get yourself back on track. You may never be 100% who you used to be. Your trust is going to be shot. Like you're going to, it's going to take time for you to be able to trust people again, for you to be able to open up to a new partner, for you to believe in humankind. It's going to take time. It's going to take time. But you will get there. Just work on those things. And even the ones that I didn't mention, even the ones that are how joyful you were, because I know I used to be, and I still am, I still am, but some days are very, very hard because I'm still dealing with a little bit of anger. I still have anger. I still have resentment, not just for this narc ex, but, you know, narcissistic family members. I'm still healing. As I talk to you guys, I'm not healed. I'm not going to get on here and say, I am healed. I know the way. Follow me. Like you guys, I'm still healing. I'm I'm in a in a much better place where I can actually get on here and talk because months ago I couldn't do that. Like a year ago, to be exact, I couldn't get on here and talk about it because I was distraught. And some videos, I think I even cry a little bit, but I'm healing. I'm healing. And like I said, I don't think anyone will get to be a hundred percent healed from narcissistic abuse that's just something that it doesn't happen you're always going to have some memories that are going to come back up you're always going to think back about who you used to be because that naive girl that naive boy that naive person who openly gave and openly trusted and you know just thought the best of everybody you're not gonna get that back and i might be wrong but i highly doubt that i would ever get that back so let me just speak for myself but anyhow i want you guys to think of the person that you were before you met the narcissist and work to get those things back you may not get everything back but get that joy back get that smile back Get that confidence back. Get your rest and have some peace. Get that peace back, okay? So that was my video for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful night. I love you. I will see you next time. Bye-bye. <music>